Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and great news for Blender fans out there is Blender 2.82 was just released today. Now a bit of an honesty here, I'm kind of cheating a bit, I'm doing this video just before using a nightly build, but basically beyond the uh, splash screen, which is the title graphic you see in front of you, uh, nothing else should really change from last night. So at, at the point this video goes live, you should be able to download Blender 2.82 right now. So what we're going to do is jump right in and take a look at some of the new features hands on, and then we'll jump in and take a look at the release notes. So first thing we're going to do here is look at the thing that is the most time consuming. I did this before we started this video so you don't have to watch a ray trace happen, but uh, RTX ray tracing has finally come to Blender. Now it's not being used in EV right now, but it's actually being used in cycles via the optics denoising library. And in order to enable this, you need to go through a couple of steps. First off, you obviously need to have an RTX compatible hardware, which as of the time of this video means a 2060, a 2070, or a 2080 device. Uh, not a 1650 by the way so uh, once you've got that you basically just come on in here go to edit and then go to preferences and you'll notice under system there is now an option for cycles renders device you can select optics and then if you have the right device it will have a little checkbox here and it will show you that support is there and it is experimental of course the experimental is important not hundred percent of all cycles features are currently featured here yet uh, but due to the optics denoising library you will get a lot less artifacts um, with a lot less path renderings having to be done. So it will speed up your ray tracing. And once you've got that, just come here into the scene setting, go to the render properties, uh, check your render engine as cycles, your feature set as experimental, and your device as GPU compute, and you are good to go. And now you can actually go ahead and render this scene, and I have already done so. So here you can see, and this was rendered in... Uh, forget the exact amount of time. It did not take a great period of time, but the big thing you'll notice is there's not a ton of noise going on in the scene. There's not a lot of uh, the artifacting you see from ray tracing unless you put the pass up really, really high. So the nice thing about this new optics library is it's going to make it much um, faster to do ray tracing if you have RTX compatible hardware. So thanks to the optics noising library that is in there. Now again, this is experimental. So um, uh, you know, take with that what you will. Now, another new thing that was added in this particular release is a new physics simulation system back end for doing gas and fluid simulations. Now, I would love to really demonstrate this to you, uh, but for some reason, it runs abysmally on my machine. I think there is some kind of a bug in effect. I'm not really sure what is going on, uh, but I'll set one up quickly and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So creating fluid simulations inside of Blender has always been quite simple. So we've got an object here. We need to create a domain object. Uh, so we'll go ahead here, go into fluid simulations. We get This is basically the bounding box for our simulations world. So you create a domain for for each type. So if you've got gas simulations and liquid simulations, you need to create two uh, different domains. So I'm going to go ahead and create a liquid simulation and we're going to need to actually have something in it. So let's switch over here to wireframe mode and we're going to create an emitter to go inside of it. So another mesh will create a sphere that goes in the middle and this is also a fluid simulation. This time this one is going to be a flow uh, and we're going to create this one of type liquid. And then we could change the, the flow geometry to inflow or outflow or whatever. I'm going to switch stick to geometry in this case. Um, so here we go back here. So now we've got an object to cause our flow. And we could do a real quick, simple bake here. So you got to bake your information out to make it work and uh, set this as a 50 frames. So we'll set the end to 50 frame and I'll do a quick bake here. Now, I actually had some problems. The first time I tried to do a bake on this one, it um, failed out completely because it had trouble reading and writing a file because it was in my downloads folder. So if you run into that, check your system log uh, that slows it down to an absolute crawl but there seems to be other issues going on I'm gonna let this bake finish so be right back okay so it is now finished as you can see here this guy has now been turned into like a water source we can go ahead and run it and then boom there is our water coming into the world now we can add a bunch more detail to this what we want to do potentially is render this one out as uh, a mesh so we're gonna have it go out to mesh and we can bake a mesh I'm also gonna add particles to it for spraying and foaming and bubbling and we need to bake that as well. So I'll go ahead and do the two bakes and then I'll get back to you once I am fully baked. Okay, there we go. So now we have our fluid simulation and this was all being powered now by something on the back end called Manta Flow. Now what I really don't understand with this and the problem I'm really having is for some reason, the faster the computer I run this on, the worse it works. Now when I was figuring out how to use this guy, I was actually using my Surface Pro in bed, unplugged, and it ran substantially faster than my two so much, much faster GPU powered machines. Now this is a CPU bound process, so the GPU shouldn't make much of a difference or none at all, but for some reason the performance on desktop has 
has been really weird. So if you run into some performance issues, don't be surprised. But anyways, this is Mantaflow powering the, this, the calculations on the back end now, uh, should result in more precise and accurate simulations. Uh, another cool thing, this isn't directly related to this, but since I have it up here, let's switch over here to the EV renderer. Like so, all right, so here we have our renderer. There's some new features going on here as well that's actually quite cool. I've got nothing to do with the new Mantaflow, but it's a new feature that is in Blender 2.82, and that's the ability to come down and switch to render passes. So let me just pause the sim. And now what you can do is you can come down here and you've got your default of combined, but we can actually come down here now and say, okay, I just wanna see the ambient occlusion, or I just wanna see the normals, or I just wanna see the mist, or combined. So you've now got more ability to see how your EV shot is being composited. Another new feature in Blender 2.82 is this. So you can now export, not import, but export only USD format. So this is the universal scene description. This is a new interchange format being developed and opened up by Pixair. I think on the high end, this is going to be the new interchange format. Uh, it has all kinds of more extra data and information and, and stuff stored in it than what we were used to with something like FBX or Collada or whatever. And Blender is moving towards supporting it. In this release, there is only support for export. So you can fit Blender into a USD pipeline now, uh, but it is not a full blown exporter yet and there's no import functionality yet, but we are taking one step closer on that front. Now, another area that we saw change in this particular version of Blender is, let me get this set up again. Uh, we now have new sculpting functionality. So Blender 2.82 saw a ton of new functionality added uh, to sculpting, and now we're gonna go even before that. So let's go here. We're just gonna take this guy and subdivide it a couple times. So we got something to work with. All right, so we got a monkey to work with. Now I'm gonna head on over to the sculpting functionality like so, and show you off some of the new brushes. Now, actually, probably the, the least focused, but what I find actually kind of the coolest is this new multi-plane sculpt, uh, scrape, sorry. So it's like a scraper, but it is aware of multiple axes. So you can see there, it actually kind of comes around on the edges. So if you want to do nice creasing, this will scrape both sides of an edge like that. I think that's going to be, a, it's really cool if you want to do like a pinch along the line. So let's see, that's kind of the end result we get when you follow an edge line. It sort of pinches it in and gives you that nice, nice result there. So that is one of the new brushes that was added. Another one that was added in here is the, where did it go? So Pose got some improvements, uh, but the relaxed slide here as well. This one tries to keep the volume the same while doing a, a translate along the surface. So the, the amount, the underlying polygons are staying pretty much the same. It's probably best shown this way. So it's trying to keep the volume more or less the same while pushing it around, which is a handy handy for uh, fine doing uh, details and such. And then finally, we've got some improvements. I'll get into the very specifics of them when I get to the release notes, but the pose and eye key powered brush for doing you know, tweaks and resolves, it also got some new love in this particular release. So that's it for the, the demonstration part of some of the new functionality. I didn't cover everything, but I got most of it. So now we're gonna head on over and take a look at the release notes. All right, so here we are on the release notes. Now, these are actually technically still a work in progress. They've been updating them as they get closer and closer to the release, but everything that we need to know, the top level stuff is all here. So there might be some fine tuned difference here. I will link to this in the linked article down below. So if you wanna check the most current release notes, they are there. Also, you will be able to find a download link to grab Blender 2.8. Two. So here we go. So we've got new things going on. I already showed you this one in the back end. So they switched to the Mantaflow back end. Uh, so they've made improvements to their liquid and gas simulation systems using Mantaflow libraries. Also, there are improvements to the cloth physics. Again, I did run into some issues with Mantaflow, so hopefully it works better for other people out there. Uh, but it allows you to create mind-blowing fire and smoke simulations and lifelike liquids using the new Flip Solver, which is what we saw in action earlier on. They've also done improvements to the cloth simulations. Um, there's an internal air pressure for creating things like balloons and an internal cloth spring there. So make your cloth behave like a soft body. Uh, and the next one up, and this is probably the most interesting but hard to explain and I didn't demonstrate it for game development any, game development anyways. And they're moving towards something called UDIM. Now this is a tile-based UV system. And the way it works now is basically if you've got a, an object like this and you want to do a really fine level of detail. Normally what you do is one mega texture. So you do a 4K texture or even an 8K texture and then you'll have a whole bunch of detail in like the face area or so on where, where it needs to be high precision. Whereas that 
that actual detail is kind of wasted on the rest of the shape. So what you're doing with a UDIM texture instead is you're breaking it into different tiles. So you're kind of, uh, you can have multiple textures applied to it. So if you want to have high resolution texture on the face, you do 4K there and you get a set of UVs on the face that have this 4K texture that goes with it. And then you could do 1K or you know even 512 for the rest of the body or different areas where they don't need that level of, this, of detail. That way you don't have to do a massive 8K resolution texture for this whole thing. Instead, you, you cut it up as it makes the most sense. Now, the problem with this approach is that um, it needs to actually be supported. So here you can see there's five tile sets. So you have to have a minimum of three, I believe, and a maximum of eight. Um, but it can be split up. So you're basically having multi-textures on this and they can all be at different resolutions. Your game engine, unfortunately, needs to support it. And right now, uh, from my research, Unreal Engine does via their virtual texturing technology. And there is an experimental UDIM support for Unity from like 2017. And I don't know if it's been updated since then. So hopefully start seeing UDIM come more and more. Other um, hardware out, or other software out there such as uh, Modo now support it. Um, so it's cool to see it coming to Blender. Unfortunately, if you're thinking, wow, this would be perfect for my game engine, uh, check with your engine to make sure that it supports it. Because this is actually an ideal technology for games where you have you know mixed levels. So you probably want a lot of detail in the face, but not necessarily in the body. This will save you texture memory from having to do a giant texture. Um, um, but again, it needs to be supported by your engine. So as we mentioned earlier on right now, Pixar, Pixar's USD export is now available. Um, so USD files can contain complex layering, overriding, and references to other files. Uh, it's This is a subset, however, if you're interested in figuring out what their exporting limitations, they do have a read more on that. I'm not gonna get into a ton of that. USD isn't going to be particularly useful in game development yet, and this is export only at this point in time, but it is a nice first step. We also got some improvements to cycles. As I mentioned earlier on, if you have RTX hardware, there is that new optics denoiser that can take advantage of ray traced hardware. Uh, there's also improvements to shader nodes, custom render passes, and more. Um, yeah, so we'll kind of move on from that stuff. We got the AI denoiser we talked about earlier on using optics, uh, RTX cards, and here you can kind of see the results. 10 samples, no denoising, and 10 samples with denoising. So you can do a heck of a lot nicer uh, renders in a lot less passes. So that's where that kind of kicks in. Uh, and uh, NVIDIA actually contributed that hardware over. Uh, EV got some improvements. Um, so better group node sockets, normal mapping for non-mesh objects, performance and quality of render passes. As we mentioned earlier on or demonstrated quickly, there's that the new ability to show uh, just the ambient occlusion, normal, mist, or combined layers that are as part of the rendered shader node. Um, you also again have subsurface directed subsurface colors shown with more coming in Blender 2.83. Uh, transparent materials now blend properly with volumetrics. And you can see the before. And the after, it's really prevalent on the fire. As I go over the fire, you can see the results of the after. So it's giving you a nice, richer result. Um, sculpting got the improvements. We saw some of these go on. The pose brush, uh, when the first kinematics, the pose brush was in 2.81, but it got improvements. We saw the slide and relax brush that was added. Uh, the multi-plane scraping allows you to make those pinched edges between two uh, planes. And brush dash ratio, I'm actually not 100%, the, dash ratio and dash sample brush properties to create dashed strokes and some other improvements to those brushes as well. Uh, Grease Pencil got a couple of improvements in this release as well. So we saw um, multiple stroke modifiers generate, automatically generate multiple strokes around the original. So you see the original and then the multiple strokes around it. Uh, and then we got a polyline tool with this new, uh, draw polygon shapes with this new dedicated line tool. Um, yeah, dope shoot improvements, eyedropper improvements, VFX reference platform is now committed to adhere to the VFX reference platform. This helps pipelines that depend on different software to have a common set of libraries they're all compatible with. Again, it should work towards making it so that you can slot uh, Blender more effectively into a VFX pipeline and have it work. And then some other improvements here, cycles improvement, improvements, EV improvements, Rigify improvements, uh, sun position add-on, collection manager add-on, and drawing position tools for CAD. And that is basically it. Now, one thing you'll notice is 
there's not as much as there was and not even close to the 2.80 release and a little bit less than the 2.81 release but they are coming much much faster which is definitely nice to see so not as much in this release but it came much more immediately now if you're a direct game developer there wasn't a ton here the sculpting tools are definitely nice i don't know how much how many of you are doing uh simulations fluid simulations for real-time use in blender but that functionality is i guess uh, a nice improvement but it's udim ultimately i think is going to be the magic thing going forward uh, for game developers anyways, it's, it does make texturing, it solves a, a texturing problem that's been around for a very long time, but unfortunately, it's one of those things we are going to be waiting for game engines to fully support. Unless, of course, like I said, you're using Unreal, in which case you can use Udim tomorrow. All right, so that's it. That is the uh, Blender 2.82 release. Let me know what you think, what you liked about the features, or if there's just nothing here for you, um, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.